Hi, I'm Chris Turgliaferra, and I'm here with Anime Impulse. The process of creating such an evil voice for Sigma really came from the fact that when I grew up playing fighting games, I always liked the really aggressive characters like Scorpion, like, get over here. And then whenever I found out it was Marvel vs. Capcom, like this was, they wanted that Sigma that was kind of like, losing his circuitry, like descending into madness. So it was really a chance for me just to go ape with it. Every line with that, I always feel like it's like at an 11. to just be so evil, just everything, just, you know, try and run. It was just a lot of fun doing it. How would Turgley Affair approve Shonen protagonist would sound? This is something I've thought about a lot because anime is full of them and not as much of me. You know, I'm all these heavies, I'm these grunts, I'm these like mature characters. They usually get beat up by this protagonist. So, but yeah, I can do that voice. And here it is. You cannot break my resolve. My friends and I will see this through. We buying that? I think it's pretty good. Sigma was my most vocally demanding role. I mean, he lives down in this area, which even when you're doing dialogue, it's not very pleasant. It was a fighting game, so you're talking about going through the light efforts, the medium efforts, the heavy efforts, and you're doing about four or five of each, and then you're doing the deaths, and they're loud, screaming deaths. The Mariah episode, that was one where I went to the booth and the director said, we're probably not gonna win any awards for this episode. <laughs> I was like, all right. And that was the strangest direction because a lot of it, I'm talking like this because my, I forget which cheek it was, but whatever it was, I just mimic that so it sounds like his face is actually smushed up. I mean, it, that was truly bizarre because Abdal just, he becomes bashful looking under stalls at, at women's legs and then whenever he was magnetized at Joseph and the thrusting and the, it was, it was an odd time. Uh... <laughs> And then also, I think I went in after Richard, so I heard Richard's voice, and he's just got that cantankerous old man voice for um, old Joseph. And yeah, that was the most bizarre, where it was like, hey, put your hand up to your face and act like it's smushed, because that's what's going on. My reaction to Abdul's fake death was, he's dead. I, he got shot in the head, he was stabbed. I was certain it was over. When I got home, I contacted my friends and because I always wanted to make sure I never knew ahead what was going to happen in JoJo. So there was never that like, well, I know I'm gonna die in this episode. I want it to be fresh where I'm like, oh God, I died. So that first death was like, it was pretty permanent. And then I went back and talked to my friends and they were like, no, 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 he's still alive. I was like, okay, well don't tell me the second one. And then anyway, when the second one happened, I was like, that's not really it. That's not how I go out. My arms, and I'm in this void. I looked at something that said, don't look back. And I looked back and that did me in. I thought it was, you know, I wanted to die at Dio's hand. I wanted that one-on-one -on -one matchup. And then it was just kind of like, yeah, he's gone. And then I kind of asked, I was like, am I done? And they're like, yeah, you're done. And I think I have like, I have like one more loop. Like when Abdal goes up to heaven or wherever he goes, he kind of goes, hmm. kind of like, good job. But that was about it. So. The first death I thought should have been the second death. You know, the first one was, yeah, I should have came back from the void. I still think Abdul should come back from the void. Maybe they will in the very later part of it. I did a uh, shout out to this guy's girlfriend who was taking a test and I did it in my uh, Gundam Tanaka voice. They really liked it, but it was like a year later, he sent me this really nice email and it was something that I was going through kind of a rough time and it was just sort of, it was just so cool to have someone like, that you didn't even know, you know, you know, care about your work enough to like, you know, email you and tell you this this thing, how you like affected their life. And like, really, I, I just love any interaction, especially with like little known characters at these conventions. Well, somebody came up to me about Noye and uh, Fairy Fencer F, and I really like Noye. He was this nihilistic cowboy who wanted to become a bug when he died. And I was like, oh my God, someone actually cared about Noye. I did, but I didn't know anyone else did. And another great fan, um, thing was King Brown made me this really, really awesome, it's on my Twitter somewhere, but this really awesome like Gundam Tanaka piece of art. I don't know how it's done, but it's got these like tiny strips and paint. It's really, really cool. And King's done them for 
a lot of other voice actors, and every time I walk to into one of their places, it's always up there. So King, you're doing really good work, um, but it's also the only piece of artwork on my wall. I'm very minimalist, but Undum is right up there. My window's here, my PC that I've built is right here, but yeah, Gundam's always looking out for me. My experience working on Testament of Sister New Devil was interesting. I think this is a family interview, so I won't go into the specifics of it, but Belphegor, Belphegor's a bad dude. Does some bad stuff. Stuff I'm not proud of. <laughs> but somebody's gotta do it, and Belphegor gets what's coming to him, so you know, don't go to the demon world if Belphegor is there. My friend Emma Bauer from Bojack Horseman does Princess Carolyn, and she's asked me to be Jonah, so I'd say if Emma makes it to any of these cons, I'll do Jonah. If I was in a football anime, I think I would be cast probably either two characters. It would either be like a tank top tiger type, a linebacker character that's really boisterous and just in the face sacking quarterbacks, or either like a big lineman that's like really stoic and like protecting the quarterback. But what I want to play is the running back. The quarterback's the one like big guy, like you know, that everyone's kind of looking up to, but then there's that running back character that finally gets his deal. It'd be nice to have a real big hero moment like that. My dream role. There's so many roles that I just kind of grew up on that I think they they were astounding, and I don't really want to go back and say, I wish that was me. So the type of role I would like to do, though, was Mass Effect was a huge influence on me. The, the storytelling in that, the relationship she made with the other characters. And I really liked Rex's character, the Krogan. And, you know, there's this one scene, I think it's in the third one, where, you know, you kind of embrace Shepard and it's like, no matter what happened, you were a friend of the Krogan, you just kind of embrace, and it's just this friendship that you felt with, you know, this computer game character. I really want to play a role where people have that sort of connection over the over a time, where we go through this entire journey in this video game world, and they have that strong a connection to this character, and we're in battle together, we go through all these things, you make choices that I might like or might not like. So really that sort of character, something like Rex from Mass Effect. Being a voice actor is the ability to live a lot of different fantasies and lives without ever leaving the voice booth. It's just such a fun, fantastic experience where you're not judged by how you look. It's all, you are judged by how you sound. <laughs> but you're able to inhibit these different worlds and it's just, it's such a neat experience that you get to live all these different lives in the booth and you get to go through these different circumstances. So it's really, it's just about imagination. It's just this, this fun, I really can't believe it because it's just, you know, that I get to do this and that, uh, that some people actually care about it. I mean, it's, it's, I feel like I should be doing it for free. I'm not doing it for free. <laughs> so don't get any ideas, producers. But it's just, I would say it's about just living, there's a multitude of different lives and just going on adventures. Thank you for watching my Q&A. You can find me on Twitter at Turgliafero. I was very lucky to just get my last name on Twitter. And then Instagram, not as lucky, uh, at Chris Turgliafero. But thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.